Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have got so many good things in store for us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to open us, open to us our understanding. Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to perceive in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to go ahead and, if you would, just turn with me to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Uh, Caleb is a young man that, that uh, was playing the, 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 the young man that was uh, being tempted and having everything happened. And years ago, Adam did the same skit. And at the end of it, by the time the weekend was over, if I remember right, there was all kinds of bumps and bruises and all kinds of things that went on for, for Adam. So we're going to pray for Caleb that he just continues to stay healthy. Amen. Because those chains get the pinch in just a little bit. Isaiah 53. Now, we know that this is a time where we begin to talk about what, uh, what, what happened on Good Friday, what happened when Jesus went to the cross. And the reason we wanted to show you the fact of literally before Jesus, what took place was there was principalities and powers, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places that literally were that were in a place where they could do whatever they wanted to. But Jesus came and stripped them of all that power. He stripped them of everything. It says here in Isaiah 53, it says, Who has believed our report, and to whom of the arm, has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should, esteem, that we should, that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was bruised for our transgressions. He, I'm sorry, he, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before, the, before its shears is silent. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and, and from judgment. And, all who, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was, he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to, be, to bruise him. He, was, he has put to him, he has put him to grief when he, ma- when he well, I'm sorry, when you made his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall see, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong, he, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered among the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgress and made intercession for the transgressors. This is a prophecy, approximately eight hundred years before Jesus' birth. A prophecy of what Jesus would be would become, what he would do. And we see on over in Matthew chapter twenty six, we see that I'm sorry, twenty seven, that Jesus is handed over to Pilate. We see that all these things began to take place, and what literally happened was. Everyone turned their back on Jesus, just as they said it would in Isaiah 53. We see that what took place was he was handed over. We see that he was beaten. We see that he was, he was scourged. He would see that they would pluck his beard out. We see that they would put a crown of thorns on top of his head, and they would drive them into his skull. We see that he would then be made to carry the cross that would go up to the, 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 Mount, the hill skull or Golgotha. And at that point in time, he would be crucified. Now, what happens is this, is that in reality of what took place is that he did all of that to fulfill what would be written about in Isaiah 53 so that we could have salvation with him. Amen? We, he, he did that so that what would happen is he would literally begin to take away the power of the enemy. 
Now in Matthew chapter 27, if you would turn with me there. In Matthew chapter 27. We see that Jesus is upon the cross and we see that they've now nailed upon him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. And in verse 45, Matthew 27, verse 45, it says, Now the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those stood there, and they, when they heard this, they said, This man is calling to Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine and put it, put it on a reed and offered it to him as a drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves opened up and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. And the, so the, when the centurion who, and those who were with him were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, the things that had happened, where they, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. Now... What happened we see here is that the veil was rent. The veil was torn from top to bottom. Why? Because man couldn't tear it from the bottom to top. Jesus, God had to do it himself, so he had to tear from top to bottom. He was coming and he was making a way for us to have the relationship with him. And in order for us to have this relationship with him, he made it so that Jesus took all of our sin, all of our iniquity, and we would not have to face this alone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, this is good news. See, what happens is when you understand that he's given us a way so that we can have a relationship with him and he's given us victory over the enemy, then what you begin to understand is that I now no longer have to stay in that place of fear. I now no longer have to stay in that place of rejection. I now no longer have to stay in that place of addiction to drugs or alcohol or lust or whatever it may be. I now no longer have to be bombarded with these thoughts of suicide. I now have to no, I now no longer have to be in that place where I'm constantly feeling rejected because even though my mother and father would reject me Jesus will still accept me amen this is the greatest news we could ever have because we needed a savior amen we needed a savior we needed someone who could come and make a way because we couldn't do it ourselves and the bible says in isaiah 53 that when he did all of this it pleased the lord to bruise him for us all be so then that way we could have eternal life and what happened was when this began to take place if you would go with me to first corinthians chapter 2 In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we see something very interesting. I'm amazed when I hear people say, well, it's just Resurrection Weekend. No, no, it is Resurrection Weekend for a reason. You know that this is the time where Passover would begin to happen. This is the time that during this season and in this time, we begin to see the amazing relationship, the amazing communion that we have with Jesus. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, However, we speak among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of, I'm sorry, not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, Any, anything that's trying to oppress me is coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, hidden, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained from, ages, from before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Why? Because if they would have known, they would not have crucified him. Because when they crucified him, he now became our substitution, and now all the power of the enemy was stripped by Jesus at the cross. 
All the power of the enemy was stripped by Jesus at his death, burial, and resurrection. All the power of the enemy, all the, the, the law that they, the enemy could put on you and I, everything that the enemy could do to us was now laid upon Jesus. All the punishment that the enemy could dish out to every human being here on the face of the earth was laid upon Jesus, and now they had nothing left to dish out to you and I. So that means... They were stripped of their power. So when we saw the young man coming up, when we saw him being tempted, we saw him being tormented, we saw him being literally harassed by those demonic spirits. See, they represented demonic spirits. And what happens is in our lives, there are things that take place and things that happen to us. And we begin to feel assaulted in our minds because we are completely tormented at times. But Jesus made a way for us to have victory. And when we have the victory, we can, st- we can call on his name, and the Lord will answer mightily. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, all you have to do is call on his name. When you call on his name, there's power that's released. And that power, at that point in time, makes the enemy subject to whatever you say. It has to leave in Jesus' name. So when we do that, we understand that there's power that's given to the church, and the church should then walk in it. See, folks, I want to tell you tonight, the reason we celebrate Good Friday is because it was was us that should have been on that cross. It was us that should have been the ones to die. Has anyone in here, has anyone in here made it perfect in the past year? Didn't think so. I haven't. None of us have. Why am I saying that? Because that just proves to me we need Jesus. That proves to me that we need a Savior. That proves to me how much we need Him. And because we need Him that greatly, that tells me that there is something that you and I should really desire, and that is Him in greater measures. So when we come in and we celebrate what Jesus has done, we celebrate the risen Christ. We celebrate Him. That in the process of everything that took place, in the process of all the torment, all the things that would happen to us, every way that the enemy, the devil would try to go at you, every way that the enemy would try to go at you, Jesus already conquered him. So you don't have to put up with it anymore. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to put up with it anymore. See, the name of Jesus is above every name. So when he said, Eli, 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 Lama Sabachthani, he literally at that point in time, was saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because at that point in time, he had never known the separation of the Father. But see, he was separated from the Father so that we wouldn't have to be. This is good news. Amen? And because it's good news, we should understand that because of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have now been bought with a price. That price was his blood. Everything that was ever needed for us to have salvation was laid upon Jesus at the cross. And at the cross, we see that that was our substitution, and he is our victory. Can you say amen? He's our victory. And because he's our victory, folks, we should rejoice in the fact that he is alive. He is not dead, but he is alive. That is why we would speak the name of Jesus over our family. That is why if you have loved ones that you're believing for, that's why you speak the name of Jesus over them. That's why you begin to tell them about Jesus. That's why, folks, we just go ahead and speak the name of Jesus over them. There are times where anybody have family members that begin to go opposite directions you think they should. Like they're rock bottom, and they think they should go up, but they, should, they go sideways. Anybody ever have that besides me? I have family members. I was one of the family members who went sideways. I was like, hey, check this out. This goes this way, this for a while. Right? Anybody ever have that besides me? You're at rock bottom, and you realize, man, this thing's, ooh, we got a long ways to go. We don't think to look up. But the reality is this, is that I have family members that are like that. And when we see that there are family members, our family members, Folks, when we speak the name of Jesus over them, we are speaking salvation, we are speaking hope, we're speaking redemption, we're speaking restoration. We're not just saying an empty name. His name is alive. His name is the only name given under heaven by which men must be saved. So at his name, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. At his name, at his name, we will find salvation. At his name, we find victory. At his name, we find deliverance. At his name, we find freedom. And that's why we're here tonight, just to celebrate the freedom that we have in him. Amen? 
And as we do, folks, there is so much more that God wants to give us and he wants to restore to us everything that the enemy had taken. But it's going to require us to realize there is so much that God wants to do in you and so much that he wants to do for you and with you. Guys, it's time for the church to step into the blessings of God. Amen? Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Now listen, you may be here tonight and maybe you're dealing with some things. Maybe there's some things that have happened where the enemy has tried to beat you up and the enemy has tried to come at you with many different, many different tactics. Maybe there has been depression. Maybe there has been thoughts of suicide. Maybe there has been addictions. I want to tell you, the greatest thing you can do is to give your life completely to Jesus. There's no greater thing that you can do. There's no greater decision that could ever be made on the face of the earth than to give your life completely to Jesus that at the name of Jesus, we would receive salvation. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be, you will be saved. You see, I'm believing with my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth. I'm not just saying a simple prayer mindlessly. I'm believing and I'm confessing and knowing Jesus is my Lord. I don't know about you, but I, I realized one day I need a Savior. I need a Savior and I need, I need Jesus. And I remember thinking when Jesus, when I prayed the prayer, I remember feeling all this weight come off of me, all the thoughts of suicide, all the thoughts of depression, all the different things that had went, all the addictions that I had had that came off of me. Why? Because I truly confessed his name. So if you're here tonight and you have been dealing with any kind of addiction, you've been dealing with any kind of thoughts of suicide, you've been dealing with any kind of fear, you've been dealing with anything like that, I would just simply ask for you to raise your hand if you want to receive Jesus. Is there anyone here who needs to receive Jesus or rededicate their life? Is there anyone here? Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray this prayer, okay? Everybody just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask for you to forgive me of my sins. I ask for you to come into my heart. Renew the fire within me, God. Forgive me of my sins and bring me into the place where you've called me to be. I accept your free gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause, amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much tonight. God, we thank you for everything that you've done, for everything that you've continued to do and how you've showed yourself strong. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we go, Lord, we celebrate that you became our substitution. We are so thankful for the substitution for your life, Jesus. We are so thankful, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. We are so thankful, God, and for every aspect of our relationship with you. And God, we ask for you just to take us into that deeper place. Father, we look forward to Sunday. We look forward to all that you're going to do. And we say, Lord, have your way. I pray your blessings upon everyone here tonight, those watching by way of live stream. God, may you just continue to be exalted in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. You are dismissed. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. I pray that this message today has encouraged you. I pray that it's challenged you, uplifted you. I pray that you came away from this message and this encounter with God, knowing that you have literally stepped into a place where you have heard the heartbeat of God and through everything. Now, in this time, I want to talk to you. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ or your relationship is not where it needs to be. Maybe you've walked with God at one point in time and you're no longer walking with Him. Or maybe you say that you're a Christian, but deep down inside, you know there's compromise in your heart. If that is you, I want you to go ahead and pray this prayer with me so that what can happen is we can talk to each other again when we see each other, either in the church or in heaven. So let's go ahead and pray. Just repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your Son's blood. I thank you for the life of Jesus and for his resurrection. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent of them now, and I ask for you to wipe me clean by your blood. Come into my heart. I receive your salvation, and I receive you as my Lord 
and as my Savior. I walk away from my old life, and I walk into my new life. Thank you, Lord. I am born again. In Jesus' name. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, you are now born again. What I would ask for you to do is I would ask for you to contact the ministry, contact the church, and let us get to you some free material so that you can begin to receive discipleship. See, it's not enough just to pray a prayer. We want you to be discipled. Jesus said, make disciples of all men. So what we want to do is we want to help you in your walk. We want to help you to where you're being able to be discipled and you're being able to walk with Jesus on a daily basis. So thank you so much. God bless you.